Tamást szeretném nektek bemutatni. Ő fogja tartani a következő eladást. Tamás olyan élvezettel lép. So the next presentation. No, Tomás is actually uh, someone who loves to build networks and uh, he loves everything that has IP address and flies. And if the whole thing goes together, then he's really delighted. So Tomás, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Actually, let me uh, introduce myself again. My name is Tomás Seke. I'm going to talk about uh, the uh, first hop redundancies and uh, I'm going to talk about the two protocols, uh, the URP and the HEPSAP. Now, uh, there are going to be uh, very nice pictures uh, uh, in the beginning as an introduction with some light pictures and then we are going to talk about Wireshark and RFC realities. So let's get started. The first slide is about how an average user views the network. Well, it's not a detailed uh, view. Uh, you just have an RI45 uh, uh, connector that we that you see. They don't know that this is an RI45 uh, connector, so they just call it a plug. And then you see a chaotic maze. And uh, if uh, he does well, then he can uh, access the resources. Uh, uh, needed for the work, but uh, the best resources are, of course, banned because this is why there is a, this is why uh, there is a, a, a firewall so that he would not uh, see the Facebook and the YouTube. This is only for the managers. Now, his view on network redundancy is just minimal. Let's go to the system administration view, system admins view. Now, here, uh, there is a beautiful uh, system um, view. You can see the domains and you can see uh, the different uh, uh, users, users, user groups and sites and uh, subnets uh, to those sites. And I think that the system administrators, the sysads, uh, system admins, sysadmins, um, think that the network is a necessary evil. It is just, uh, it is just complicating their lives because they need to uh, they need to uh, push everything to the soldiers of the network administrators. Um, I don't want to uh, kick them very much because this is probably true from the other side as well. Anyway, in a, an optimum case, we cannot talk about network redundancy, and uh, this is not uh, the most important uh, part of uh, their interest. If we look at the network diagram, then you can see that there is a, a, there is redundancy. This is just a, um, a recommendation, and there is a layer two. Uh, on layer two, they are uh, wired, but there is also layer three redundancy. This is what we can see. Uh, there are the protocols here, and in the lower uh, lower layer you need to find out something else because uh, it would be difficult to have a dynamic uh, routing protocols there. And it is here where the two protocols are going to be used that I'm going to show you. Now, the layer two implementation, how this uh, looks like physically, uh, this is another issue. Uh, what I wanted to tell you with this short introduction is that uh, there is redundancy, or at least uh, you ought to have and supposed to have, and bigger companies do have it, and the other important thing is that this is not really um, uh, visible. A colleague of mine said that the good IT uh, person is invisible uh, because uh, he's not there, you don't need to look for him, and he's just uh, concealed. So there is redundancy, but why exactly we are attacking the redundancy? Um, because we are going to use a very complicated processes. Uh, why are we doing this? Uh, now, this picture, I'd like to show you the difference. This is RP poisoning. RP poisoning is big, robust. You can see it from kilometers, and it uh, uh, sends the packages or the bombs. The, so the two things are destructive, identically destructive. Uh, and it's easy to protect yourself because you can, uh, you can uh, early warn, you can see it from a distance and uh, it has a lot of uh, uh, there's a lack of pre precision and I think this is what the companies are protecting themselves uh, against most and the AP, uh, the HSRP however on the other side uh, is uh, uh, much different it is uh, much more it could be deadly very deadly and it could be very easily done and you can also get into the middle 
So uh, this is one of the most important objectives of the presentation. Now, what is the objective of the presentation? Um, I would like to show you some uh, easy tools. Uh, we are just going to uh, see what buttons you need to uh, press. We go under the hood as well to see why this works. And then um, we're also going to see uh, different uh, uh, devices and both uh, uh, to achieve objectives. And this is uh, what these uh, simple tools are going to help with a simple de with a live demo. Let's start with the HSRP protocol. The HSRP, uh, this was uh, determined by Cisco in 1998, uh, Cisco proprietary uh, March 1998, uh, make the definitive gateway fault uh, tolerance so that uh, there would be a layer three redundancy. And uh, the, what they did, they took two or more devices, they put it into a group uh, with a virtual IP address and a standardized MAC address. And as a default gateway, uh, this virtual IP address is given to the host. And uh, this is what they are going to use all the time, despite the fact uh, that uh, these uh, devices in the background will decide uh, which of them is going to answer the IP uh, Call. It's always the higher priority device that is going to respond to the uh, virtual IP address. If there are two identical priorities, then the higher IP, uh, the one with the higher EP IP address uh, will uh, take it over. Now, this is the MAC address. This is important. This is we're going to use it, and uh, the reason we are having uh, the table tennis. Uh, the uh, table uh, table tennis table is because uh, this is uh, both the active and the passive devices are uh, serving uh, in the three seconds every three seconds you need to serve and then uh, if uh, you stay out for, for three serves then you're out so this is the most important point here you can of course uh, adjust the time uh, 10 seconds or subsequent level and you can have a very fast protocol as a result of that we are not going to go into the package uh, we are going to talk about the uh, version number one which is the more widespread uh, version two has not a lot of uh, novelties uh, instead of 255 uh, there are 496 standby groups that it allows to create and also the multicast uh, address was uh, uh, changed I think that uh, now it's uh, instead of 12, uh, it is uh, uh, 102 or 12. Now, the operation code is going to be important. Uh, we can have uh, uh, three different types, and dif in default, there are going to be hello packages um, going back and forth. These, uh, this is the service, this is the serving. Uh, one is the coop message. Uh, the coop message is sent by the host to the other if he would like to become the active uh, uh, device because he thinks that his uh, priority is higher or because he's the attacker. Now, resign uh, message is sent by the active uh, device if they want to uh, resign from their active uh, status. The active and the standby uh, status is now determined. Now, you're in speak status if uh, uh, the device uh, just discusses what uh, its role should be, and all the other uh, devices are in listen so those that are not active and uh, or standby they are all in listen mode and let's start the demo and the objective of the demo is going to be to to serve uh, the uh, attack descriptions. So we want to make a man in the middle uh, with these uh, attack descriptions that you can find on the internet quite extensively. This is what our network looks like. This is what I brought together from the devices that we can see here. This is ourselves. We have two switches. Uh, we have two routers um, which are serving. Uh, there's the HSRP here. Uh, our virtual IP address is going to be three and we have a test router uh, which uh, uh, from where we want to uh, reach the destination 
and we will see what happens to the router, and we will see what we can do in order to get the packages first to come here and then go to the destination, and the and vice versa. In order not to have to uh, type so much, I wrote a script. So I'm just going to uh, press the enter and I'll tell you what the script does. Now we are in, in the test router. And we ping the destination. There is some uh, ARP, some thinking. But basically, uh, the uh, the exclamation marks mean that uh, uh, there was a response. And then uh, when we started the script, it just brings up an interface and uh, launched a capture there. This is what we can see here in the background. You can see that the packages are going back and forth, uh, coming from IP, IP address 1. Uh, the priority of that router is 110, and the priority of the second router is 100. What matters is that we have authentication data, but uh, basically the HSRP authentication can be three type. Uh, either there is no authentication, option one. Second, there is uh, authentication simple text, in simple text. Uh, then you will just see what was written there as a configuration, and there is an MD5 authentication. Currently, there is no authentication. If there, if there was simple text authentication, uh, there would be uh, the, any uh, monitoring program could follow the authentication. We can see the uh, monitoring, and then there is a default timing set here. Let's just go further with our script. Layer Zinia is uh, uh, launched here. This is the king of layer two audits. So anything you need uh, on layer two uh, is incorporated, is entailed here. It shows you that uh, under the HSRP, uh, uh, under the H HSRP tag, it found the uh, packages. We want to become active routers. Uh, therefore, you have to write the IP address uh, in a reverse order for some sort of perverse uh, attitude. And then, if we start the attack, then in the background, we can see that a coup message uh, went out with a priority of 255 and told the active device that he wanted to be it wanted to become the active device with IP, IP 11. Now the uh, active device uh, responded, OK, let's discuss that. Again, this has been re, uh, repeated, so we want to be the active device. And then uh, device number one uh, accepted to go on standby. This was a simple attack. There is nothing uh, complicated here. We were just pushing the keys uh, on the keyboard. And then um, we can see that uh, it took 10 seconds uh, for uh, uh, device number one uh, to regain its active status. Uh, we can see that they are still just uh, uh, discussing, and then now it is active. So ten, it took 10 seconds uh, to take over the active status or to take back the active status. Let's go further with our script. This here is another attack which I'm going to be used uh, from this point on. This is uh, a uh, um, device called what I did here actually is I sent uh, certain packages uh, and we can see uh, that uh, Okay, so this is called Hyena. This is uh, the name of uh, this device. Um, there was no uh, coup message, so the active uh, uh, device had to resign because we just sent hellos, uh, simple hellos. Uh, there was only just uh, one signature uh, for the HSRP, uh, so um, probably. Now with that, we have the active role. My question is, who is now going to respond uh, to packages coming from IP address 1.3? Because now we are the we have the active status, and uh, who is going to answer uh, response coming to 1.3? Nobody, nobody, folks, because we just get, uh, obtain the active status, but we are not uh, preoccupied uh, of uh, answering or responding to uh, 1.3 or other the other requests coming from that IP address. Now I have uh, an interface. I will give my interface the uh, this IP address, and 
uh, I will also uh, use the standardized MAC address of the HSRP and I'll try to answer, to respond. I need the network uh, card. The Wireshack is then uh, interrupted, but then I relaunch everything. And let's not forget that we only have 10 seconds not to lose the active, uh, not to lose the active status, uh, not even for a second. So again, I have another Wireshack, another attack. And here is our script. It would not be necessary. Anyway, I send an, uh, an R ping, uh, which is going to send uh, uh, packages on the network. We are then going to introduce ourselves to the members of the network, saying that uh, our address is number three, and uh, uh, the MAC address is this and that. If you look at it now, now, right now, Then you can see that uh, these ICMP packages are coming in to us, and we also get the answer. And if we look at the uh, uh, the uh, table, then you can see that we did nothing illegal because uh, we had uh, the same MAC address, so uh, we didn't have to send out uh, um, uh, illegal RP packages. Now let's ping the destination. And we can see that the ICMP packages are coming in, but nothing happens to them. So they do not get past us. This is where the packages come to come from. They get into our uh, server, but there is no our um, computer, but uh, nothing happens to them from that point on. So uh, first of all, we uh, switch on uh, IP forwarding and we uh, set router number one as gateway. Uh, it is an, it no longer has the active status, but it's still a router, so it can route the internal uh, packages. It's still uh, doing its job, uh, but uh, the only difference is that it's now doing it uh, with the IP address number three and not uh, uh, its original IP address. And then uh, the user is just going to see that uh, the communication is going on with uh, uh, server number three. We ping it again. And we can see that all of the packages passed through us. Uh, there is only one problem, the ICMP redirect, uh, which we send back uh, to the uh, victim. And here we tell him that uh, IP, num IP address 34 is for testing purposes. Here is this uh, gateway number one, and this would be much better for you, because I can only do the same thing as forwarding it. Uh, it's not good to send the ICP uh, re redirecting, because uh, that again uh, uh, could trigger a response from the protection systems. And also, uh, and also, if I accepted that, uh, we would have been uh, expelled from this uh, uh, half-obtained middleman status. So, if now, if we now look at it, what we see is that these are no longer going to be visible, uh, these nasty packages. The whole thing is nice and uh, blue, but there's still a problem. It's uh, still the packages sent to destination, so we can only see uh, what was sent from 34 to destination. Uh, the, re this, the reason thereof is, is that there was an asymmetric routing. Uh, the package comes uh, uh, with 34 uh, all the way along and the destination 34. And here, that is not going to send us uh, with destination 34 because it knows, uh, this router knows that 34 is there and not us. So it's going to send it there. So there's asymmetric routing which could cause problems. And on the other hand, it's only half of the packages that we see, uh, which is not really beneficial if I wanted to monitor uh, the traffic coming f back from the destination. Again, we uh, give another uh, or instruction, a script, an interface not uh, is switched on uh, on uh, the network uh, card of our device. And therefore, uh, the NAT interface NAT is going to send uh, address 34 in its on, it, on its own behalf. So what the router is going to see, that number three is here. It will see that the package went from our package, and therefore it's going to send back, send it back to our package. And we will, of course, send it back to destination. So if we look at it again, if I switch this on, then this is going to go through, uh, the traffic is going to go through. And we're in the middle. So this was HSRP, the most important objective to show you this. 
I'm now going to stop the script. This is going to stop by itself, and we have a short script uh, which is going to reconfigure the whole thing to VRRP uh, so that these should be not done manually. And it says uh, config, great, and VRRP, and VRRP is going to be the next attack that we are going to use. Okay, now let's look at the protection. Um, what sort of uh, uh, protection capabilities we have, how we could uh, protect against that. Uh, based on Cisco best practice, it would be MD5 authentication that we could uh, determine. Uh, so an MD5 uh, password actually is an authentication. And in that case, if FHR1 router uh, would receive messages like someone wanted to take over the active role, uh, but there is no the no appropriate authentication, uh, then it would just uh, log that we want the authentication, we want the IP address, and it also would inform that someone wanted to uh, obtain the active status. And then what we see is that router number one uh, retains, sustains its active, uh, uh, its active uh, uh, role and not willing to uh, resign from that. Uh, number 11 will also, may also have an active role and that could of course cause problems. Anyway, uh, the, this would make the life of the attacker much more difficult. Solution number two was something I found on internet and on the forum. Uh, this is not a real protection or real solution. It's rather a very smart workaround. We take our active router, we uh, set the maximum priority, and in order to uh, prevent that this uh, uh, maximum priority would be pretended mimicked by someone, uh, then we can set the IP address that we have there, and which is quite uh, uh, odd, it works very well. So you can see that uh, 254 active router tries to attack number 11, but both of them are claiming to be active, and 254 is not giving over the active status. To the contrary, it also sends an ARP package saying that don't believe this guy, uh, come to me. So it works well. Now, this is uh, my favorite solution. Uh, let's just write an ACL. ACL in Cisco's world, uh, in the world of Linux uh, IP tables, as now I learned at the workshop, uh, is a firewall type of uh, uh, of thing and with a couple of ACLs we can we can ban all of the HSRP ports uh, coming to HSR, uh, HSRP uh, packages coming to HSRP ports uh, with the exception of those that come from trustworthy sources uh, we can list it out and it works very well we have the permit rules we had a match and we can see that the uh, non-appropriate addresses, I mean, coming from a non-appropriate source, uh, will be rejected. Let's look at the VRRP protocol. The interesting thing is, and let's go through that, is uh, that HSRP protocol uh, is, uh, is using, uh, was uh, uh, beyond the IP protocol, also using the transport layer. Now, the VRRP stays within the IP protocol, uh, uh, IP protocol number, IP protocol number 112, 112, and uh, it is only TTL 255 uh, that it uh, accepts. So if a package is not uh, coming with a 255 TTL, then it would reject it. Uh, this is an interesting protective function because this way um, it was solved uh, not to get packages from other sources. We have a different MAC address which does not really matter. Anyway, there is a standardized MAC address, and it's also the standby group that is identified here. So if it's a, a group number one, then it is going to be one and so forth. And the most important significance is that the most important difference is that you can calibrate it as a Cisco uh, device, like this is device number two. Like let's say a number of uh, devices, two or more, are in a standby group, and I take a virtual IP, and always the highest priority address would respond to the virtual IP. Uh, but there's also an opportunity saying that the master uh, 
master router because here you have master and backup. So everyone who's not a uh, master is a backup. So uh, that is the 1.1 IP address. And then it will say, this is what I use as a virtual IP address. And this is what the backup routers are going to um, take over if anything happens to me. Now, in this way, we can take the role from him, but we'll have the same IP address. And we also want to communicate with that IP address. And this uh, IP uh, collision, uh, if they're not working properly, then uh, it's, it is going to be very difficult to um, use it. I would like to show you a bit more in this presentation compared to previous presentations. I'm going to attack uh, the uh, attack the formation where there is a master router. So if the HSRP protocol was ping pong, that is a table tennis, then this is uh, just uh, uh, bouncing the ball with your feet. And uh, as long as there is no problem, uh, others are just standing aside and uh, uh, watching you do it. But when you fall or you uh, drop the ball, then the next one is going to take your place, who is the highest priority router. The package structure is a bit different. Uh, it is a version uh, dependent. Let me just show you the version that was implemented by Cisco. We already have a newer version. Uh, I read both of the RFCs. It is almost the same uh, with uh, the exception of authentication. Now there is uh, uh, no authentication, authentication in simple text or identification. Uh, now the authentication was taken out uh, because they said, well, we can authenticate and then we do not uh, give up our master role, uh, but we cannot prevent anyone mimicking the master role and creating a conflict situation. Uh, because if you have two master uh, devices in the network, then that could really kill the network itself. There is no uh, sophisticated package here. We have only one opportunity uh, to send uh, uh, packets via VRRP packets. And uh, we also have a very nice uh, uh, formula here, which is going to come uh, with a time a bit over three seconds, because uh, three uh, pa packets or will have to fall out, like in case of HSRP, so that someone else could get the priority. Uh, this is interesting, because it's not from zero to uh, uh, 250 feet, but one to 254. And then if the master wants to resign from its role, then it can send the zero priority. And this is something you can use uh, in case of certain attacks. Uh, again, this is something I didn't go, um, didn't check thoroughly, but Priority 255 can only go to the device which really has that IP address, which is used as a virtual IP address. So taking into account the previous example, if I have an IP address of 1, and this is my uh, virtual IP uh, address as well, then my priority is going to be uh, 255. Now, thank you very much. Uh, and the VRRP demo uh, is going to aim at showing you a situation where the master clones the IP and the virtual IP, and we will see that this is going to be a bit more difficult. What you can see here is that there is no transport layer. Uh, there is an internet message control protocol. And this is not the right one I'm looking at. Yes, uh, this is the protocol I was looking at. I was uh, looking for a priority 255. If I click on it, uh, then you don't really see it. So it's a, a priority 255. Uh, this is, is something, this is known by the Wireshack, both based on expert info. Uh, there is no authentication here, maybe it wouldn't change a lot if uh, there was a simple text authentication. And also the virtual IP address, which is important at this stage. And before doing anything else, uh, let's just look at this, whether we can see the right uh, tool and device. Uh, we just uh, start to think, and we can see that uh, it recovers and the whole thing starts functioning. What matters is that they see the destination. Uh, if we look at the ARP, uh, the ARP uh, table, then we can see that device number one uh, took over the standardized uh, MAC address. And we try to make the 
victims believed that we were them. Let's look at the script. We were not uh, really very uh, out, uh, very fine got here, uh, but we, can, we are now uh, keeping a low profile in the network. We have an IP address of 11. Uh, this is important because the tool what we are going to use uh, should be uh, uh, functioning. So let's launch it. Uh, this is a tool written in Python, and if we said that your Xenia uh, is uh, the, the winning application, then we can see that this can be used for routing protocol, and it is also possible to authenticate. Now, this is RTR0 interface. Uh, let's, that, uh, let's just set it. VRRP comes up. Um, the software shows that it found interesting packets or packages, data packages, and uh, data packets, sorry. And let's say we want to take the IP address. And let's just introduce ourselves that we are the owners of IP address number one. And let's throw there our MAC address and let's see what happens. Get IP. Scroll back a little bit. We just sent in a package with the priority 255, and we also sent uh, the uh, uh, free VRRP uh, package saying that your address belongs to here, and this is quite valid. But the situation is not that uh, uh, easy, because uh, IP address number one, despite the fact that we try to obtain it or take it away, it is still in use, because this is also the original IP address of uh, our device number one. And he is going. that is going to answer as well. He will always have the last word, and he also tells us that this is the case, saying that they are here. And if we look at our device, where it is right now, then we can see that he was the winner. So um, device number one rewrote the MAC address to a MAC address that is not supposed to be there. But we can't do anything here, because no matter how many uh, RPs uh, we send in, ARP packages, uh, they are going to have the priority. Now, if there were 200 to send in, they will give it up after a while, but this would be very brutal, so uh, that's not really gentlemanlike. Let's find out something else. First of all, let's uh, assume the IP address. Uh, let's uh, put it into a sub-interface, uh, and then let's say that we are sending uh, an introductory uh, ARP packet uh, to the victim, only to the device uh, from which we would like to rechannel the traffic. And then let's do this, and then it's not going to. Uh, not going to. Uh, well, we are now sending out the ARP packet, uh, and we will ping the router uh, in order to make everything uh, uh, extra, uh, to make everything um, work fine. Uh, we are using AINA here as well. If we look at the uh, if we look at the coupling, we can see that it's the same MAC address that was here originally. So we didn't send any packet uh, that would be uh, a characteristic of ARP, and any of the devices would um, um, hook on that. So if we look at the uh, small window, we see that we have restored the original situation. The client doesn't see that uh, it is chatting with us. Megpingeljük a default gateway-t, ami ilyen esetben egyes, ugye? És látszik, hogy gyönyörű szépen bejönnek hozzánk ezek a csomagok. We can see how these packages are coming to us. Megpingetjük a destination-t. Tök jó, ugyanaz van, mint az előbb, ugyanúgy nem válaszol. Here, basically, there's not much we have to do. Uh, it's the same thing like with the HSRP. Uh, of course, all these are familiar. We actually set the default gateway. With the default gateway, there's a bit of a difference. It's not the one that we'll use, but the two. It would really look stupid. It's IP address one we'll be sending packages to IP address one, so we'll just stick with two. And the packages will be going up and down wonderfully. I'll still show you how they do it uh, wonderfully across. ICMP redirect most pont nincsen, bármikor lehetne, de azért ezeket illik szépen kikapcsolni, ugyanúgy, mint ahogy az előbb is megtettük ezt, valamint 
Uh, and we set precisely in the same way the NAT also, uh, so that it should go across us, all the packages. And now if we look at it, uh, not here, but here instead, we can see how packages, uh, the whole data flow is going. This could be a telnet. Uh, I'll show you a telnet, for example. If anybody wants to, they can really uh, see the characters, you can see everything. Basically, the whole man in the middle story, and that's the bottom line, is that the virtual IP address is the same like the IP address of the master. And we've managed to update the whole network uh, by not sending any illegal packets. And in the end, uh, we really had all data uh, flow through us. So let us the VRRP protection possibilities, uh, MD5 authentication in the Cisco world, because for Linux, there's very interesting solutions. But in the world of Cisco, MD5 is Fantastic, you can really use it well. Uh, of course, the attacker is going to have a tough job. You can see the Wireshark output, uh, the 11 and the 1 fighting against one another, both of them uh, declaring to be the master. However, uh, it is going to give up to uh, device 1. We have already seen that it is a protection vis-a-vis uh, -vis HSRP if the master IP uh, is identical to the virtual IP, because then in that case, he will always update the ARP packages. Uh, it would have to be very, very aggressive, but I think it's not an advantage. Uh, just purely to be able to take over the active role by attacking this way. So I think is this in itself is a good protection. And of course, we can also protect them with an access control list. Of course, the difference being is that in the world of HSRP, we said uh, UDP uh, 1985 port. Uh, here it's an IP protocol, it's 112. It's basically IP 112 protocol. Uh, in the end, it is the same. You see in the permits, the denies, the matches. Uh, so, so the final result is the same. Uh, this really shows how uh, HRP poisoning versus FHR hacking. If you look at the static ARPs that you're using in ARP poisoning, while well, you cannot, that is a true protection. If you're using ARP watch, it doesn't really protect the network, but it's going to be writing uh, emails to the sysadmins who are not going to be very happy to wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning for this. Some uh, operating system security, yeah, there are some built-in protections for ARP poisonings. Uh, it's very, in certain cases, that they will accept uh, ARP updates, IDS, IPS. Again, the same story, to, uh, there's a lot of signatures. And the dot one x which again is physical access protection, so it's, a, it's not really port. Well, anyway, it's it's a certification based uh, uh, access to ports. Uh, naturally, of course, it will provide a solution for everything. So if the attacker doesn't have access to the network uh, that he wishes to attack, then he cannot be successful. We can see in static ARP OS security, these are not a solution for for uh, FHR hacking. Uh, because we didn't send out not one single illegal packet. So uh, I, I, for any IPSS, I'd be happy to attack the first hop redundancy because uh, the fidelity rate is so low. Uh, it is so, such a signature is so lowly reliable, so lowly reliable that they will not find it. And of course, fundamentally, I did not want to uh, basically discourage you from redundancy. It is good. Redundancy is good. Uh, if it wasn't for redundancy, those operations would have a lot of, lot of, much more, much more 
uh, sleepless nights uh, in a given case they would spend the afternoon next to a router this is where you can uh, uh, contact me please contact me personally I prefer that I'm here today tomorrow bring beer and let us talk really of course I can answer emails but the topic the complexity of the topic perhaps allows much more personal discussions